and welcome to the Movie Girls. Wow, we're so good. We're so polished. We did that on the first try. It's almost like we didn't rehearse that for like the past ten two minutes. minutes. Oh, <laughs> felt like a yeah, felt like eternity. Anyway, oh my and if goodness, we ruined it by then not actually talking properly after. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna adjust my cord, so it might be a little. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Teal made me a coffee, and I didn't know I needed it until she told me I needed it, and she I was like, me "That's it. true." I, need it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel much happier now. <laughs> A little bit of coffee. Always I wasn't happy. unhappy. I was just like <laughs> combative. You were combative. I know. That's an accurate <laughs> sentence or word for that. I'm aware. That's okay. <laughs> Took the coffee to make me realize that. It's great. That's you why I go into you work. Stole. I get a coffee like before I talk to anyone. I just got a barrel in. Hi. How how's everyone? How are you doing? I forget that because we'll go to work and I forget to leave early enough so you can get your coffee. Because I'm a, like, I want to get to work with 30 seconds to spare. Oh, God. And I like getting I there, like, there. super early, drinking coffee, just, like, sitting. Well, because nobody leaves me alone when I get there early. Everyone pesters me, so I never get to, like... Maybe they know to, like, leave me alone, because I'm just like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, we know no. who the morning person is out of the two of us. And it's it? not me. Oh, I'm like, is it me? <laughs> is it you? <laughs> you know, it's not... I'm not naturally a morning person. I was always a night owl all my life. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know, how do you, when do you know that you're a morning person? Because I like to get up early and I like how much I get accomplished, but like, I'm in a bad mood about it. <laughs> so I don't think that necessarily I'm a, constitutes a morning, I'm, I yeah. wa- I'm a wannabe morning person mm-hmm. is what I am. I'm going to do stuff, but like, I'm not going to be pleased about it. Yeah. But I'm going to get stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I enjoy my day better when I like wake up really early and yeah. get things done. But yeah, it like takes me a while to like get into it. Get our shit together. Sometimes. I, I don't it. know. I get it. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mm, <laughs> I don't no, know what that was. Great. I don't mind. It was fun. All right. Good um, morning. <laughs> today we're watching a movie called Obvious Child. Yeah. I'm actually really, really excited. Have you seen about it? it? I have seen it. You have? I okay. saw it when it came out. Oh. Because I remember. Um, I forgot. I remember vaguely, like, I heard about it and I was just, like, super stoked to see it. I'm a big fan of Jenny Slate. Ever since she's she was great. on SNL and dropped an F bomb in, like, her very first appearance. I was reading about that. Oh, I don't you? remember her season. I don't remember that happening. Oh, I, I was looking at the clip, look up the clip, but I ran out of time. I was looking at her Wikipedia page and I was like, she did that? Yeah, and, and she did got not... fired at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, they didn't renew her contract. Well, they just said they didn't renew her contract. Yeah, they, like... they fired her. And then I felt so bad for her. I was like, God, can you imagine how that conversation went? Like, she went on the whole season. Yeah. And. Like, and then it's like, yeah, we're not going to renew your contract. It's like, fuck. There's a lot of that. Like, if you look in SNL's history and all the comedians that got fired slash didn't get their contracts renewed, mm-hmm. and uh, what a feeling, hey? Yeah. That's just got to be oh, awful. But a lot, a lot of, of them the became ones, like, huge. Chris Farley was fired, or contract, whatever. Mm-hmm. Adam Sandler was fired. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of them are, like, f- well, they say fired, but is it fired or is it non-renewed it's, contract? It's technically... It's both yeah. because they will specifically say like, "Oh, that's Lauren being like, I don't want you back for Apparently, the next season." Lauren d- hates improv. No, oh. doesn't like improv. He likes it scripted. He does. I mean, not I mean, like I get improv. that because it's it's, it's the risky. kind of show where if people do kind of go off script. It could go very wrong. You don't know how it's going to be received. I guess. Yeah. But could go but well. Pretty, but but yeah, yeah, he seems like um, a very mm-hmm. rigid, He's interesting Canadian sort of too, person. I know, which is again very not us stereotypically. We are easygoing, apologetic people. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> obvious child. You're going to have to keep me on track today, I think. It's mm-hmm. one of those days where I'm like, let's just talk about everything else except the thing that we're here to talk about. That's okay. Obvious Child came out in 2014. <laughs> like, the new thing on, or maybe it's not new, the thing that I'm noticing lately on Wikipedia is that they're they're like putting all of the movies that we're doing into like this weird genre category like remember last time it was like american comedy drama sports movie oh yeah that was such a oh, that was very so this bizarre. one's an american romantic comedy drama or also it was um marketed as an abortion comedy which is we'll mm. talk about that later <laughs> uh so written and directed by jillian robespierre i don't robespierre robespierre thank you i was gonna look I up how to say her name, name but then guess what i did it okay I got did you. you just know it yeah robespierre do you know a robespierre no but i read lots of stuff but is it one of those things where you're like reading it like, wrong? No, it's it's. I've heard it before. It's Robespierre. My family is Lapierre. Lapierre. Robespierre. You're not. Oh, anyway. I was like, I was gonna say your last name, but we probably shouldn't do that because I think we've done it in the past. Dead. But yeah, let's not do it again. Um, we probably did for Brave. Yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Robespierre. My mom's side. Uh, in 2019, she directed a short and then developed it into a movie a few years later. So this movie was made, I think, in like 2012. 
came out in 2014. So starring, as we talked about already, Jenny Slate. <laughs> Jenny Slate's her. incredible. I love her in a dramatic role. She does a lot of voice work, actually, and like yeah. obviously a lot of comedic work. But she's she's I, she really shines in this movie where it's it's comedy, but it's also dramatic in a lot of ways, obviously, by the content. Um, Jake Lacey and Gabby Hoffman. Remember Gabby Hoffman? You know who I she is, right? I love Gabby Hoffman. She's probably, like, my favorite character in Girls. And she was yeah. great in that. Now and Then, I think, was, like, obviously the first now thing we That's one of my favorite movies. We're going to do that too. eventually We're 100% going to do that. I love it. We can do that next. I'm, I don't know. Okay. I <laughs> love Now and Then. Um, yeah. yeah, she's in that. And then I didn't realize it, she, that was her in Girls when, until, like, a few things, like, a few episodes later, I'm like, what is that? I was yeah, like, like, oh, my God. Weird. And Gabby Hoffman I was like, shit. I was so excited. <laughs> she anyway. just seems really cool. Both, she, both these girls are do. real cool. I, I concur. Uh, so the story follows stand-up comedian who has a drunken one-night stand after breaking up with her boyfriend. She finds out she's pregnant as a result and decides to get an abortion. That's it. It's very straightforward. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. A cocktail. I'll leave it. Oh, okay. It's fine. <laughs> Were you done? I was going to say one thing, but oh, I'll, no, I'll say it do. later. No, no, no. I don't want to say it. Moment's over. You go mm-hmm. ahead. You go ahead. Fuck. I thought it was done. It's fine. I, I said it like it was done. Yeah. Anyway, the cocktail. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I super hated <laughs> picking out this cocktail because there was no, I had such a hard time getting, I don't know, like an idea or just some sort of inspiration for it. And then Tiff being the wonderful, helpful friend that she is, she's like, you can do anything you want. <laughs> and me being the fucking asshole that I am, I'm like, that's the worst thing to say. Yeah, I stressed her out. <laughs> yeah, because I can't do anything because like having anything that I want is, is too, there's too many things. I need at least like one ingredient or like a theme or a color. Yeah, because to, to be fair, on. Teal's never seen this movie, obviously. So she's and it was, like, it's about yeah. abortion. Like, what, yeah, what so do you do with that? God, don't look at my Pinterest searches, guys, because it's, you know, I, I go on Pinterest for all my inspiration for cocktails and stuff because I just like to see what people make and then I make an amalgamation of a bunch of different things and get ideas. So I'm searching like lazy cocktail and like half ass cocktail and then I'm looking up <laughs> abortion cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find any sort of inspiration and it was really hard and then this then i still had nothing this morning then i got up i was having my coffee and pouting and then opened up my instagram and like the first thing on the page is like this list of all these pretty rose summer cocktails and this one is called pink glow pink which glow. i was like ooh, i like this this is fun and i was like that's pretty good because like you know when you're pregnant you're glowing you're pink i don't know whatever but i just like and then the ingredients are rose bourbon orange juice and a wedge of orange. No recipe, no quantities, no ratios. So I'm like, great, I love it. I'm gonna get a wine glass, get some ice, dump what I feel like in there and carry on. So I've got, I've definitely I put a shot of bourbon. I got Jim Beam. All the, I mean, it was lots of like, I mean, a lot of the websites I was looking at for different bourbon cocktails, it was all, everyone likes Maker's Mark, but I like Jim Beam, so I got Jim Beam. Um, I definitely put one shot of that. And then I splashed in like a half a wine glass worth of rosé. And then I topped the recipe with orange juice. So, yeah, you figure out the recipe from there. I don't know what this is going to taste like. I don't really care. But I think that's the kind of the point. Because the whole thing seems like, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> then I was like watching all the trailers and little like featurettes and stuff. And this girl doesn't seem like she has necessarily a, a pan. A, she doesn't pan. have a lot of direction. In yes. Life. Yeah. I was trying to say plan and path, and I said pan, oh, but yeah. direction is definitely the better Plant. word. <laughs> Plant. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I like this. I like this, like, random mix of ingredients. No recipe. Let's go for it. So this is a pink glow cocktail. Um, oh, God, it's heavy. Oh, yeah. Uh, to sh- abortion and having to the right abortion to and the right choose to it. To... Thank you, Canada, for now. Well, that's different. Well, that is different. You know what? At first I was kind of like, I don't like it. And now I'm like, you know what? I like it. It's kind of interesting. It's interesting. Huh. Wait, let me, I like. Who fucking knew? Drink from the most awkward. Oh. <laughs> right beside the garnish. No, I like that. Huh. How would you describe this? I don't know. You can, you can taste the bourbon just a little bit. Mm-hmm. You can and then you get the a lot rose. of the rosé. And then it kind of finishes on like the fruity orange yeah. note. I like it. It's very subtle. Oh, sweet. I'm I not like sure it. how I feel about it. I like it. Good. Yay. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to drink this whole thing. Excellent. 
Thank you. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Teal texted me like 8 a.m. this morning that she had just figured out the cocktail, which is very unteal like. Like, she's oh, always like, yeah. knows probably like a week ahead. <laughs> I'm a planner. <laughs> yeah. This is, this, yeah, that's what I do. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just yeah. going to do this thing and I'm angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a morning. I was so pissy trying to fucking figure it out. Like, God, this I don't know. Those are my like, favorite rah, rah. cocktails. Like, even if they don't turn out, it's like, I don't care. I, yeah. I threw something together that was like different and I don't know. We don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't taste it until we are actually recording well, we make rules. a point that's the rule yeah. so you don't know it could be shit and that's just the risk we take yeah. and, and I'm the happy only time this. we strayed from that was last week's episode uh stella got her groove back because it was those pretty it was my fault i filled what? the coconuts really full. they were really full so we had to walk down to the pool with we our take full coconuts and it was gonna spill. spill so we drank it just to get the level down but that was the only reason it wasn't like technically cheating it was more Bill avoiding. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know how much a coconut could hold, so I just kind of was like, doop doop doop. Oh god, it's too full. <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise, we've been very good. I'm very proud of us. Me too. So, uh, will you get the full, unabridged edition of our experience drinking? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're gonna watch movie Nick. Bye. We're gonna watch a movie. Bad emotion. We're back. We're back. I'm. I'm like the perfect amount of. Buzzedness. Buzzedness. Yeah, full disclosure, um, halfway through we finished our cocktail, and then we went and delved into the now extensive liquor cabinet in the Fiddler household uh, and made new drinks that were, I think, probably 60 to 70% alcohol. Yeah, they are four alcohols deep. Four alcohols deep or worth with two juices. We had bourbon. We had triple sec. We had rosé. We, we had, had whiskey. Whiskey. We had oh, five. Yeah. Wait, no, I had rosé, triple sec, cherry whiskey, and Oh, we didn't have bourbon. We had bourbon the first time. We didn't do it the second time. We skipped the bourbon. We went for the cherry whiskey instead. It was really good. And a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of pineapple juice. Yeah, so just basically, like, go into your liquor cabinet and put everything you have in a cup and drink it. It's delicious. Yeah, we did it. So, sorry about it. Ten out of ten would recommend. Would Um, do again. But this is what's happening. And uh, you're welcome, and we're sorry. Mm -hmm. Equal parts, depending on how you take this. But either way, we don't particularly care what you think. But a little bit. But not really. We're going to do what we want. I don't care. We don't care. Um, we also paused the movie, you know, a minimum of six times mm. to have long if discussions. Not more. I think it took us, what, we started this at... 10.30. 10.30. And it is now 1.30. 1.30. So the movie's they, only an hour and a half long. Yeah, and it's been three hours. The movie's 84 minutes long. And we took three hours. You know, <laughs> is it our fault? That's just how we do no, things here. That's how we roll here. At the movie girls. Um, you go first. This is your movie. You do the talkie talk. Okay, well, I will say that um, by making the film, I'm going to call her Jillian. It could be Gillian with a hard G. Um, I know or a Gillian. Gillian. with a nice one. Yeah, nice G. soft G. I'm down. Um, but I'm okay. going to assume it's Jillian. Um, she hoped to remove the stigma surrounding abortion, and she stated her frustrations as. Um, with what she perceived as misrepresentation of women on screen when it comes to stories about unplanned pregnancies. She wanted to make a film that destigmatized abortion by featuring a woman who terminates a pregnancy without regretting her decision. Because if you think of the movies where a woman gets pregnant, um, off the top of my head, I'm only thinking of Juno. Mm. There's a few, though. Um, And a lot of times she will end up having the baby. She'll think of it. She'll think about it. It's an option. But they tend to. Opt I can't the think other of many way. movies where she decides to have the abortion because yeah. people probably like, ooh, I don't. I, ooh, why would I put that in the movie? It, that's that's not it. a story. Well, that was one of my notes. Was that what I liked about this take on pregnancy and abortion is that it doesn't even remotely question whether or not she will get an abortion. She's going to. That's the decision. It's already made. There's no discussion about it. The flip flop question back and forth is how. And or when will she tell the fella about it? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I liked is that it wasn't... She decided what she was doing with her body mm-hmm. that was not up for discussion discussion whatsoever. Um, it was how and when and if she includes uh, the guy in the situation. Yeah. The, so I, I enjoyed that take on it. For sure. And I, I remember when this movie came out, I heard that they were going to like show her overhead like having the abortion and her reaction to it and i remember thinking like i'm excited for that because it's not this i mean it's a serious thing and it's a procedure but it's it's something that you can just do 
in a day mm-hmm. and it's done. And it just showed it and she was fine. And afterwards she looked at like another girl. They both had finished having their abortions and they kind of shared this little like smile that was like they were grateful. T- they, they knew that they made the right decision, essentially. There yeah. was no regret. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yes, it's an emotional decision and it's it's a thing that you need to go through and it's a lot to handle, but it wasn't the wrong decision mm-hmm. for her. Well, that's the thing is abortion, if you become pregnant and choose to either stay pregnant or not, in the instances of the or not, um, then the big turmoil is how does that person feel leading up to during and after and it's a lot of times shown as a because it can be a very psychologically traumatic experience Mm -hmm. and definitely can be um but there's also a lot of women who aren't hugely traumatically affected by it Mm -hmm. um but that's it's almost like the norm of having an abortion is if you are going to have one well you better expect to be pretty emotionally and mentally traumatized by the experience because Mm -hmm. you're whatever ending a life or killing a what if or whatever um but also not everyone feels that way no you know because we you know joel and i because we're married and we have that discussion all the time and every every few months we tend to revisit that and say okay in the next three months If we happen to become pregnant, what is our plan for that? What do we want to do? Because we want to make sure we know we're on the same page beforehand. Because if it happens that we do become pregnant, um, even though we use protection and that's not something we want, we want to make sure we know where we stand beforehand. So when all the emotions and hormones and all that stuff comes in, we know where we stand. We can still change our minds, but at least we know where we stand as a couple and as individuals if it happens. Um, but I always kind of assume because for us, for us, our choice is abortion. That's mm-hmm. what we'll do. Um, that's the plan that we currently have if, if that happens. And I'm fine with that. That's cool. I'm great. That's great. That's fine. <laughs> that works for me. Um, but then the fear is like, the fear for me is not the, I don't know, the taking a life thing or whatever. It's the how am I going to feel after and is this going to be a big emotional, mental... Oh shit, I forgot to close the blind, the door. Sorry, now it's garbage day at the other house. It's never as loud on here. Great. Um, but that's one of the big things is how am I going to feel after and this is going to be basically debilitating for me for days, weeks, months afterwards. Like what is that going to do to me in a, like, as an emotional and mental state? But sometimes it was actually really refreshing to see that for her, for the most part, it, it really was just a procedure. Yeah. Doesn't mean if you have that emotional reaction that's bad or anything. It's just one of the possible reactions you could have. Yeah. And having an abortion is something that can and might affect you for your entire life. But to me, having a child is something that would affect me a million times more. Exactly. Throughout your entire life. So for me, it's kind of an easy decision that I would make. To have an abortion as opposed to not. Yeah. Sorry, I had to close the window because it was going to me. Yeah. And I know for some people it's not a light decision to make, but... No. And it, it is a light decision. It's not a light decision. It's all depending, dependent on the person. And that's okay. And it was just nice to see... Excuse me. This movie... That her coming to that decision wasn't really relevant... She just had that decision. It, it was it's what she wanted. Yeah. And you don't see that. It's always the, like you said, the lead up to the, is this what we're going to do? Can I do this? And what do I want to do? And all that turmoil about trying to make the decision. But she already had the decision and it wasn't even a question. Mm-hmm. Children, her mom. And it was, it wasn't even questioned. No. And that's okay. And that was nice to see, I guess. You don't get that a lot in mainstream media and especially in this fucking day and age. And it was really nice. I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> uh, did you read that the film was shot over 18 days in New York? No. Oh, it was shot over 18 days in New York. Did you oh, know? Oh, my God. I didn't know. <laughs> and they were actually given permission to shoot for a day in Planned Parenthood. Really? Yeah. Aw. Yeah. That's nice. It's really nice. Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood sorry, the uh, 
alcohol is talking now, <laughs> um, is such a wonderful organization. What they do for women and families, and it, it's amazing because everyone, a lot of places that where they protest Planned Parenthood and it's a, the abortion is the thing. But fuck, what they are and who they are and what they do is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Like family planning and birth control and testing. And there's so many things that they do for women and families and educational purposes. and, And, you know, there's testing with different cancers and ovarian cancers and breast cancer and helping women in so many ways other than just can I get an abortion or not an abortion. Like it's... It's such a small piece of the things that they offer. Yeah, well, especially for young people, too. Hey, where you can go there, you can get condoms or whatever kind of birth control and STD testing. Mm -hmm. And just information about contraceptive, contraception and education. Because sometimes in, in a lot of different cities and towns and schools and countries, whatever, communities, religions, they don't talk about contraceptive, contraceptives. And sex education, because there's so much that kids don't know. And, you know, with, it's very topical right now, the discussion of abortion, um, which we'll definitely get into later, um, about what's happening in the world and in the States with that. Um, But in a lot of countries, cities, provinces, states, whatever, um, the rate of abortion goes down with the education about sex. Mm -hmm. And because kids don't know how babies happen and they don't know they can still have sex and be safe about it they just don't know because they're never told people are don't want to tell their kids about that so when their kids go into sex knowing nothing and then they get pregnant it's like well just talk to your kids about things and tell them what the potential consequences are ways to avoid and you know ward off that kind of thing like it's you know, they think that abstinence is the best policy. And, well, of course, abstinence is going to give you a 100% guarantee you're not going to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. But you also need to deal with realize that people are teenagers and they don't understand. And you need to tell them about it. Like, still, you can still preach and encourage abstinence while still educating your children on what can happen if you're not. So they can make yeah. an informed decision for themselves. And Planned Parenthood plays a big part in that. And that's not, a like, a controversial thing. No. <laughs> To me, the funniest argument is people that say that sex is only for procreation. So it's like, okay, so then that means that we should only be having sex between the ages of like 25 and 35. That's yeah. one, one good decade of sex having and then no sex. That's it. That's it. You can't, yeah. you can't do it. If, if you're, it's not for procreation, what's even, what is even the point? And yeah. that's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the one thing about like, if a woman has sex uh, with a hundred different men in a one year span, she can only get pregnant once. But a man can have sex with 100, 100 to women, different women in one year span and get 100 women pregnant. <laughs> but yet women are the ones that need to be controlled and have regulations put on their bodies and, and all this stuff. But they can only get pregnant one time in a year span, but a man can impregnate 100 people. 100 women he can impregnate in a year span, but we can't. But yet men, they're, they don't even have to get a prescription to get Viagra. That's over the counter. <laughs> it's no problem at all. Condoms are free. Viagra is over the counter. But if a woman a woman wants to get birth control, it has to be a doctor visit. It's a whole discussion. If they want to get an abortion, it's a whole thing. Like, it, it's so hard for women to protect themselves and take care of themselves. But it's so much more difficult and infrequent for us to get pregnant. But a man can get anybody pregnant whenever he fucking wants to. Yeah. And do you know and the amount of relationships easy. I've had where I was the one that had to provide the condoms? Yeah. <laughs> And I would never, I would, I would have them. I would never leave it to somebody else. But at the yeah. same time, like, I was the only one that was kind of prepared. And that's just, yeah. <laughs> it's so bizarre. It's so ridiculous that we're the ones that are expected to take care of that, even though it's the guy that's so much easier to just make someone pregnant. Yeah. And, oh my God, the, the working on like a man version of a birth control pill, but the side effects are just really intense and they really don't want to go with that. But all the side effects are actually less than what the current side effects of birth control is. Like the side effects of birth control are, in, in, are fucking in outrageous. Yeah. Like the weight gain and the hormones and hair loss and all kinds of fucking shit. The ridiculous like blood clots and so many, 
like hemorrhaging and aneurysms and so many fucking things that can happen if you're on birth control. Mm -hmm. But they had like a couple of them for like the male birth control pill and that was just a little unacceptable. Yeah. And what's men's biggest worry about having a child? Like 18 years of child support payments? Like how many songs have you heard where that's like the big... Oh, that's what you're worried about? 18 years of child support payments? Okay, I have to... Grow grow a person and and ruin my body for life and take a shit while I'm giving birth. Yes. No. (sighs) Don't want to. Fuck you guys. Not interested. The shit that you guys don't have to deal with is astro fucking nomical. (laughs) We have to deal with so much stuff and you guys have to deal with nothing. Go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourself. Ugh. Ugh. (laughs) Literally. Stop fucking us. Fuck yourselves. (laughs) <laughs> um, so like i mentioned earlier this is kind of billed as an abortion comedy um like that's literally what posters said abortion really? comedy yeah and nbc was actually it drew criticism um for requesting that the word abortion be removed from online advertisements um but they apologized after a petition was circulated by planned parenthood <laughs> nice good job planned parenthood for sure and i <laughs> and it's kind of unfortunate because calling it an abortion comedy um, it kind of does a disservice to the movie because, like, really does. the coolest thing about it is like the casualness with which they like handle the subject matter. Yeah, right. Like the abortion isn't the central plot of the movie. It's no. just a snapshot of this girl's life. She's trying to figure things out, and she happens to have an abortion in that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and they make it like super realistic, but it's just kind of reductive to call it an abortion comedy. It really is. That's not what it's about. No, it really isn't. It just, yeah. yeah. And I think Jillian, like, expressed some frustration with that as well for it being referred to that. But at the same time, um, having the word abortion comedy, like, on a poster is kind of cool, on the mm. other hand. You know what I mean? Like, that we can say that and it's okay and the exception of NBC <laughs> being upset about it. Yeah. But. Whatever, NBC. Whatever, NBC. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, her choice to have an abortion didn't define her in this movie. No. Right? And again, it almost didn't even feel like a choice sh- we watched her make. Yeah, she it, just She knew. already knew what she wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, when she, there was a period of time between when she took a home pregnancy test and found out she was pregnant, mm-hmm. that she probably had her thought, her, you know, her decisions. Yeah. But they didn't, they didn't film any of that. They didn't focus on that. That wasn't the focus. No. It went from her doing the home pregnancy test to she went to a doctor to make sure, and she just said, I'd like an abortion, please. Like, yeah. first thing she said after the doctor told her she was pregnant. So, mm-hmm. um... That's how it's kind of different than other movies that you've seen. Yeah. Where women have found out they were pregnant and then, you know, knocked up, right? Yeah. How long does she agonize about what to do? About yeah, exactly. Should I have to be? And what's nice is it, even though we didn't watch that um, inner dialogue or struggle or whatever that she went through to make that decision, it didn't feel frivolous that she was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get one, whatever. Yeah, it was like, just it the right thing nothing. for her to do. Yeah, it didn't, it wasn't disrespectful or frivolous to have the abortion. We just didn't need to see the process of it. She made the decision herself. Yeah. And it still felt informed and respectful and like the best thing for her. But it wasn't imperative that we see her have that discussion. Mm-hmm. with herself or with anybody else it just made sense because she had just lost her job she just broke up with her boyfriend she had this pregnancy as a result of one night stand mm-hmm. but also it doesn't matter it doesn't matter even, yeah. even if she had a successful job and she had a boyfriend or a husband and she mm-hmm. didn't want to have this baby and she wanted to have an abortion it wouldn't matter mm-hmm. well <laughs> that's like always something that i think about too because you know, we, when, you know, doing our first together and figure thinking about that. Cause like, I really mean it when we say every few months we have that discussion because your mind can change all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've been having that discussion for years. Um, but now it's almost, I kind of think it would almost be harder for people to swallow if we did get pregnant and I chose to have a, an abortion be, and we chose, but I chose, um, because we're 32 We're married. We're stable financially. Mm -hmm. We're in a good spot in our lives. Why would we possibly choose not to have it? But we 100% would choose not to. Oh, yeah. Dan and I talk about it too all the time. And it's 100% absolutely have an abortion. It's easier to swallow if it's like, you know, a 17 year old. Oh, yeah. Than if it's a stable, successful 30 year old. It's like, well, here's no reason you shouldn't have one. But I guess I'm fucking want one. Fuck you. <laughs> I can still have one. Your reasons yeah, are like, always your own. Yeah, we. it's kind of interesting as time goes on, the phases in my life where it's like, I feel like, the, the, you know, you reach those peaks of 
this is not going to go over well and this will be all right. And then it's not going to go over well. And we're, I think right now we're in that, like, this is going to not go over well. I mean, I'm not going to tell anybody or I've never had that happen. We haven't had a scare. We've been lucky that way, I guess. But I mean, if it ever happens or whatever, like it's my choice to tell whoever I want or not, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, whomever. Um, But it's just interesting to think about that. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's people almost, would be so invested. Yeah, in if your you're like decision. 17 or you're 32, those are both very like, I don't know. It's weird. It it's is weird, weird how different those are. Mm-hmm. I guess in age range. Yeah, but nobody else is living your life. You're the one that has to not. deal with. <laughs> exactly. It's weird how people think they have it's some sort weird of like how people think opinion on yeah. your body. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> the reason that. I chose this movie is because of all these new anti-abortion laws that are jeopardizing women's rights and. Mm-hmm. Gabby Hoffman's character in this movie that was, by the way, made in the short in 2009. This one made in 2012. Her character says, we already live in a patriarchal society where a group of weird old white men in robes get to legislate our cunts. Oh, and that it's was so scary. Thing. Yeah. And that rings oh. more true now in 2019 than mm-hmm. it did over, you know, well, let's say a decade ago when this film was first made. Yeah. The shit that's fucking happening in the States right now. Um, But also that's happening up in Canada, too, because there's a lot of politicians because we're getting into we're getting close to that thing where we get to vote in a new prime minister because however people feel about Trudeau. Um, But a lot of politicians, different parties are starting to take a stance one way or the other on abortion Mm -hmm. and making anti-abortion part of their platform. It's a big thing in conservatives right now. Yeah, and the pendulum always swings yeah. wildly the other, other way. So it's it's kind of a scary possibility for yeah. us now because we've talked about this in previous podcasts where we're kind of watching what's happening in the States and we're we're enough removed that it's it's terrifying to watch, but it's also kind of the sense of like, well, it's not happening here, so we're in our little bubble. We don't really need to worry about it here. Like it's awful to watch and I mm-hmm. kind of wish I could do more, but it's so it's far enough away that it's not exactly on the forefront of my mind all the time. Yeah. There's not as much we can do because you can't. We can't call our elected officials because they aren't related to. It this. doesn't affect us directly. But this is starting to be a thing, and there are politicians that are taking the stance of anti-abortion as part of their political campaign for seats in parliament and for running for prime minister and blah all that stuff. Politics I don't always understand. Mm-hmm. I'm learning more, but still, they're taking that stand, and it's terrifying yep and that's that's the thing it's all older white men Mm -hmm. and gabby hoffman actually went to some sort of i don't really know what but she went somewhere where they were passing the law and it was all these women outside of the building protesting it and then you know it's men inside Mm -hmm. of the building passing the laws and that's such a terrifying visual isn't it it really is like It's a lot of middle-aged white men who are making these decisions. But then you also hear them speak about anything to do with women's reproductive reproduction. They have no fucking clue what (laughs) happens. There are some of those white men, those middle-aged white men who are saying that, uh, oh, no, no, no. The the female body has ways of of shutting down that kind of action when when rape happens. happens. Um, no, no, that's not it. Like, there's just... The shit that they're fucking spewing is mind-bogglingly enraging. And the scariest part of it is that there's women, too, that... I mean, it's not just men, obviously. There's women as well, and that's just... And it fucking falls down to fucking education in sex. Sex education, which, again, fucking props to Planned Parenthood for trying to teach the youth of today about that because the youth of today turn into the middle-aged white man of tomorrow Mm -hmm. making passing these fucking laws it's insane um so i looked up stuff on that and what's happening um because do you do you know a lot about what's going on there you said you did or did not i know this and that i i'm on twitter (laughs) you're on twitter i don't know a ton Mm -hmm. american law or you know the whole thing is politics is very confusing heart rate um, Bill. Yeah. About if, you know, if a fetus has a heart rate, heartbeat, then abortion's illegal. And I saw this really interesting thing that I would like to read, if that's all right with you. Mm-hmm. It's a little long, but I think it's really interesting. Um, I follow uh, Feminist News on Facebook, which I find some really interesting articles uh, and opinions and stances, which I, I really like. I'm really liking them right now, so check that out if you'd like. Um, someone asked a question, do you believe that once a fetus has a heartbeat, uh, six weeks gestation, that it should have equal human rights as a newborn baby does? 
So it was answered by Sarah Greer, who has an MS in microbiology and immunology. Uh, And she says, and this is all her quote, which I really love all of it, uh, of course not. First of all, the term heartbeat is extremely misleading. A six-week fetus doesn't even have a heart. What is actually occurring is a minor electrical activity at the fetal cardiac pole but that doesn't evoke an emotional response that anti-choicers can use to try and control women. Second, heartbeats are, irre- are irrelevant to human rights. We don't even use heartbeat as a measure of whether someone is dead. Medical professionals don't call time of death until the brain would be unable of sustain- sustaining life. Third, a fetus below the age of viability, 24 weeks, doesn't have the neurological capability of consciousness, sentience, or pain reception, much less survival independent of a host body. A six-week fetus is the size of a pea and doesn't have an actual brain, and the average person shown a picture of one couldn't tell it from other species if you paid them. And most importantly, babies and even grown adults in our society do not have the legal right to use someone else's body or organs without their express consent even to save their own lives. So even if you want to pretend non-sentient fetal tissue with no real neurological hallmarks of personhood should have full human rights, you still can't ban abortion because no one has the right to someone else's organs. You can't even take tissues from a corpse to save a dying child unless that person, that dead person, gave permission for organ donation before their death. So trying to ban abortion at six weeks is saying that non-viable fetuses deserve more rights than anyone else in society, and women deserve fewer rights than dead people. End quote. That's an awesome quote. It's, and that's what's so shocking and terrifying, is that someone dies, and if they don't, before their death, sign something saying that all of their organs are available for donation, you legally cannot take anything from their body any organs any skin any eyeballs like nothing you can't take a heart to save a, someone that's dying because you didn't expressly give permission before your death mm-hmm. but a woman who has a pea-sized bit of cells that doesn't actually have a heartbeat you're fucking the heartbeat band is bullshit is it doesn't have a heartbeat at six weeks oh that 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 tiny little pea-sized ball of cells has more rights it, it, it just it's fucking astounding to me that what we're worth as a as a female in this society we are worth less than a corpse mm-hmm. someone who's lived a full life and died has more some a dead body has more rights than a woman because she has a pea-sized little bit of cells in her body mm-hmm. um and will have to go full-term pregnancy and go through that. I read, too, today that there was something like, like over 700 deaths a year in the United States from childbirth, which I feel like is a shockingly large number. Well, yeah, they said that it's, it's very high for the United States. It's huge. 700 deaths uh, on average, randomly, from whatever article I fucking read. Mm-hmm. Women die. 700 women a year die from giving birth in 2019. That's fucking crazy. With all the medical advances we have now and all the knowledge and information we have, and we're still losing 700 women to childbirth a year. Yeah, and who do you think these women are? Like, they're not privileged no. white women, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and that's part of the big discussion. That's, that's why it's allowed to happen, because yeah. it's not happening to white women. It's not happening to middle... I muted. It's not happening to middle-class white women. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's part of the big discussion, too, right now, is that this is another it's a race it's a it's a racial issue um because this abortion ban it really doesn't affect middle class enough white women and white families it actually really more so affects uh lower class um uh people of color and women of color Mm -hmm. because they are tend to be in the uh lower class um minority minority i don't know i'm struggling for words but because they're less educated um, and given less information because it basically makes a cycle of they don't put a lot of money into um, lower uh, income neighborhoods uh, to give education on how to uh, have birth control and things like that. So they get pregnant at 17 And they start this cycle of, okay, well, I guess you're going to have to have your child. Then you have a bunch of children, and then you're on welfare and child support. And then they're on it, too. So then they never get to better themselves and get into that middle class and up society. 
and and reach their possible potential um, and get out of that and make something of themselves so that people of color are no longer exclusively in that lower class um, tier. So this is another way for the white people to keep people of color in that lower class by not letting them have birth control and abortions. Mm -hmm. So it's just another, it's a whole, it's so much bigger than just, than than women. It's more so about women of color um, not being able to get out of their circumstances because the government is forcing them to stay down by not educating them and not letting them have control of their bodies. Yeah, well said. And speaking to your earlier point too, the most ironic, hysterical slash not hysterical, because if I didn't laugh, I'd cry. The thing about (laughs) the men who are so offended on the behalf of these cells in your body are also the ones that are probably okay with choosing to murder other men and women um, on death row. Yeah. (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. I'm allowed to make that decision. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) How does that even make any sense that if you have an abortion, you get the death penalty? The logic like, is what? astounding. It's so fucked up. It's mm-hmm. so fucked. And it, I don't know. Like, we're outraged as women, which is amazing. And I think we also have to recognize our privilege in that um, as white women, that we have so much more privilege than those uh, that have less. Absolutely. And, it's, and that's the big thing. That's the... That's the the real root of of what's going on is that it actually is just hurting hurting those that are in a minority and it's keeping them is do they're doing everything they can to keep them down because my god what would this world be if women and women of color and people of color uh got to rise above power yeah and rise above white men yeah my god what would this world be Probably a lot better. <laughs> Definitely a lot better. Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Stupid um, assholes. I don't really have any other facts here mm. about movie or abortions, but I'll just say, like, I think the choice to have an abortion is one of the most heartbreaking choices that you could have to make in your yeah. life. But I am so grateful that we have that choice. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I... You can... If you have to make the choice to have an abortion or not... You can make that lightly if you want to, because that's your fucking choice. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though I know that that's what I would want to do, I still know that a part of me is going to really, if that happens, I will struggle with it. You will still think about it your entire life one way. Because you'll always wonder what if. Of course. But you might not. But chances are pretty good that you're probably going to wonder about it. Yeah. At least think about it. And that you'll have some sort of struggle or, yeah, debate your mind about it or whatever. But But that doesn't mean that that you'll regret having made the choice Mm -hmm. you may not wonder whether or not you made the right or wrong choice yeah you know what i mean you might regret it you you might might. you very well might and that's that's okay too like you know maybe you decided that that was the wrong choice and that's something that you have to deal with and you know i'm sorry for whomever has to go through that because that's i can't i can't i can't imagine can't imagine but we're all on a different journey so Mm -hmm. that's kind of just means you have that yours yeah it's your decision to make Mm -hmm. and you're Burden to bear if that's what it is. And that's the thing is it's, you know, and then there's all this stuff now too about, for fuck's sake, men suing women over having an abortion because they didn't get a say in it or whatever. But again, you're not fucking growing a human. You had an orgasm, so you had a great time. Uh, And then that was it. That was, wipe your hands off. That's it. That's all you have to do to make someone pregnant. That's it. Just like, uh, uh, done. Well, do you know the story about Sophia, Sophie Vergara? I'm buzzed. What's her name? Sophia Sophia Vergara. Vergara? Her ex, I don't know, boyfriend or husband, she had her eggs frozen and he's essentially like suing her because she wants to get rid of those eggs. And he's like, well, no, that's, that's my unborn children. I have just as much say in the protection of those eggs. So he's like not allowing her to destroy them and he's but like basically hers. saying I know that I know I know what none of it makes any sense this is the point and this is a mad world that we're living in okay there's one thing if they like froze some eggs and some sperm and she's like I'm gonna get rid of all of it well it might be embryos I'm not sure what the situation is but what the uh, actual fuck <laughs> fuck you men and you're not even together anymore to, like, and yet he's own like everything go fuck yourself go fuck yourself oh my god that makes me so angry 
Do you have Ugh. anything else? I don't know. I don't want to end on a negative point. So no, no, no. We... We're going to go into things that's going to be great. Okay. We're going to have positivity. All right, let's go. It's going to happen. Um, it's just, it's really frustrating. I think it all boils down to no uterus, no opinion. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. I love that. Um, fun things I liked about this one. Um... <laughs> a little bit in her beginning little like stand up thing I love that she was talking about her vagina and uh, how you can't start the day with a clean pair of underwear and then end the day with like a delightful one I read this great article on vagina pH uh-huh. and that yeah that's your vagina pH level and it's very acidic and that's why your underwear gets all gross yeah bitch it's a self cleaning oven Shit. it is don't for all you ladies out there if you're listening don't douche don't douche say? don't throw scented shit and soap up your vagina it's not meant for that you can clean the outside all you want to. Great. Good for you. Clean it up. Don't put things up in there. I think it's douching is such like a 60s, 70s, 80s thing. Hey? Yeah. It, it, you know, it was mar- mass marketed to women. Mm. And I think a lot of women from those decades still douche and they think it's totally fine. Yeah. But it's, like, it's not meant to. Your vagina is not meant to smell like a field of flowers. It is meant to smell the way it smells. And if your man or whatever doesn't like it, get a new goddamn man. Your vagina smells like it's supposed to smell. Don't put things. Like? Depends on the day, which is again normal. Right now it's period time, so not pleasant. Copper pennies. Copper pennies, exactly. You know what? I fucking love the way my vagina smells. Good, bad, weird, funky, whatever. I like it. It's great. It is my vagina, and it is great. No. Fuck everybody else for how it smells. <laughs> it smells the way it's supposed to smell. I like it. I like Did you ever vagina. do that thing when you were a teenager of like taking a hand mirror and looking at it? I didn't, didn't. It was kind of awkward. I've seen it. I've looked at it. I've spent time in the mirror, I guess. But I was never like, it was, because I remember like on Sex and the City when like Charlotte has a look at her mirror and like looks at her vagina or whatever. And it's right. all like this revelation. I didn't have a revelation moment of looking at my vagina, my vagina for the first time. I had more of a re- revelation moment. I remember I went to the Metal Art Gallery in Saskatoon. This is art gallery that is closed down now because it's moved, but it was a beautiful gallery. Um, and the... Um, the artist that had a show on it was all vagina art i've seen it really yeah well it's very popular online all the different vulvas you mean right so and it was but it was there was paintings and there were still lifes and there were sculptures and hanging things and it was this whole it filled the whole space with all these different mediums and ways of showing a vagina and i thought it was amazing and then within the next year i think i watched a performance of the vagina monologue for the first time and i was just like oh my god i just loved it it was really cool that was more of a thing than actually looking at it for the first time. Yeah. The thing, I mean, um, online there's this thing where it's like a whole bunch of pictures of different vulvas. Oh. And obviously they're all different because they're all different. And yeah. it, I think that for me was kind of like an aha moment where I was like, oh. Yeah. There's um, an artist on Instagram. It's called the Vulva Galleries. It's not if you look at it. Because that's the thing is it's not, we all call our vaginas vaginas, but they're actually a vulva. The vagina itself, which is just the, just the first inch inside of like the internal part but the entire thing is called a vulva um which is such an interesting thing because everyone just calls it a vagina yeah i think and i only started even... calling it a vulva like a decade ago i was like oh, oh god i started calling it a vulva within the last six months because <laughs> i didn't know no, i just you don't call know. it a vagina but you it's don't know a vulva your mm-hmm. vulva is the all-encompassing genitalia mm-hmm. um but i don't know if you've seen the vulva galleries on instagram but i think from the general gist of what it is is she does commissions I, I think people must send in photos of their vulva and she does watercolor paintings and they're beautiful what she shows is so beautiful there are different colors and skin tones and hair types and lengths of labia because people are very self-conscious of their labial length because you want to have this night nice neat hair free tucked in little vulva and if your inner and outer labia are mismatched or stick out, it's this whole thing that of self-consciousness that you're supposed to have. And so she has these beautiful pictures. Just looking at it now. And look how pretty they are. And if you, it's the dot vulva dot gallery. Oh, thank you. On Instagram. Um, but if you poke on one, it usually comes with a write-up from the person that sent it in talking about how they feel about their vulva or past histories of it or what they've discovered about it. And it's honestly one of my favorite Instagram artists. Yeah. And I love the person that does this. I think they do such a beautiful job. 
But they're so different. I just clicked on a lovely vulva, Ooh. and she said she's researched surgery. She considered surgery. It still niggles in the back of my mind. Um, she was excited to see Hild- Hilda? Hilds? Hilda? Hilda's work is I really disliked oh, and felt self-conscious of how I looked. Since seeing my painting, I can't stop going back and looking at her. Yes, I've even given her a pronoun now, and she really Ooh. isn't as bad as I thought, especially now as I can compare it to loads of other portraits that Hilda has done and realize the variety of vulvas out there, all special and unique. And yours is beautiful, girl. Look at it. It's nice. Look at it. They're so beautiful. And aren't those photos lovely? They're really nice. And it's everyone is different and they're all beautiful. I'll make sure when I when I we post this episode, I'll tag them in it. Um, so you guys can find it. Um, you guys being what, just Katie? <laughs> <laughs> There's like one person that listens to us. I don't know who listens to us. Oh, Anybody. Nice. Whatever. Um it's just such a beautiful thing to know that your body is just your body and that there isn't one way of looking at things that includes your vulva. They're all different. There isn't some one particular way to look and we all have so much shame that's thrown on us from such an early age Mm. from all these magazines and porn and whatever but how we're supposed to look and there isn't one thing. There isn't a cookie cutter mold of what we're supposed to fit into and it includes we all everything. got different fingerprints. We, we all, all got different vulvas. It's true. And titties. And titties. We're a little buzzed. We're having a great time. I'm pretty buzzed. Um, it was a very long stem boat laughing about the her vagina underwear. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I like this ended with a lot of possibilities open mm-hmm. for what that couple could be, couldn't be, might be, might become. I liked all that. That was great. I love this movie. I, hope. I, I was I gonna ask that, that question. So I love just hanging on to it. Oh, sorry. It's question time. It's, it's question, question time. time. Oh, we should have a jingle for the question. Question time it's with question the time. movie girls. These girls are gonna answer all your questions. Cool. Hey, Teal. Did you like the movie? I did. I very. Did much you love it? it? <laughs> I did love it. It was very well done, and I liked it a lot. I love Jenny Slate. I love Gabby Hoffman. I love that boy, Max, who I can never remember his name, but I've seen him in a lot of stuff, and Jake I like Lacey. him too. That guy. He's, Is that his name? Yeah. Oh. He's, yeah. Yes. Um, and Richard Kind, who plays her father, was yeah. amazing. No, Jake Lacey, we'll, we'll talk about him a little bit, because his role was just kind of like a bit of a blank slate in a way, but just kind of enough to... <sighs> You know, he wasn't necessarily, he wasn't involved in her decision. She didn't even work up the nerve to tell him until pretty much like right before, the day before the abortion. She didn't even was tell that him. when she was doing her he thing. Came to her she did a comedy show because she, she couldn't work up the nerve to mm. tell him because but of course. But she did also try leaving him some voicemail saying, I need to talk to you. He, oh I yeah, like voicemail. I said, she Please tried to tell back. him. Yeah. Told him and then he kind of walked out so you don't really know how he's feeling. But obviously mm. he needs to also emotionally kind of deal with it as well let's give him some credit and then he's like yep it's absolutely your decision and i'm here to support you and that was just like the best possible reaction he could have had he showed up went with her to her appointment um went back home with her and like just took care of her and they cuddled up on the couch and watched gone with the wind and that's how it ends and it's just like the most perfect yeah ending that you can imagine and i think that's the thing too is you know some of the the male stance on well that could have been you know how dare she get an abortion either with me or with me not with me without knowing um because you're taking away my child and blah 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 or whatever but it's just it's so what a selfish thing to say you're pregnant and i i my fault because i didn't put a condom on cause which is my, terrifying in yeah, and of itself yeah it's my penis and i should have covered it because i'm an idiot <laughs> um so it's your fault you stupid man um cover your fucking penis um whilst fucking uh, but then to say, well, I would like that child. So if you could just spend the next 10 months growing a human, uh, and completely putting your body through an enormous task so that I can have a person, that'd be great. Cause a lot of the thing, my issue, I think with like childbirth or not childbirth, but like having children is for the most part, people tend to want to have children basically for vanity because they want to know what their kid's going to look like and have a little image of yourself fucking adopt. Jesus Christ. There are so many children without homes right now, but you are so goddamn vain. That but isn't you it my purpose of a woman to procreate yeah, and have a baby? baby? I thought that's why I was put on this uh, earth. What else am I good for if yeah, it's not to nothing. have a baby? It just it's so fucking vain to me that you're not a complete fucking you're not a complete woman until you are a mother. You can be a mother without giving birth. Just like you can be a dad without ever having kids. I'm a mother to the fattest cat you've ever She's seen. She's a loaf. 
Yeah, I got, I got a little furry loaf. Is that a loaf. loaf of bread? Is that your cat? Don't know. She's a chicken leg. She is. I have a great picture of her being a chicken leg. Yeah. That was my favorite thing ever. This is my bean. But that's it. Just being a parent doesn't happen just because you biologically birthed or created a person. Biological parents can be just as shitty uh, as step parents and vice versa. Step parents can be a fucking amazing parents. Um, just as much as biological parents can be amazing parents. Mm -hmm. Being a parent doesn't mean that you created something. It's you were there for an entire child's life. So don't be so fucking vain that you can't be a parent without actually genetically creating it. Go fuck yourself, you ignorant, vain human being. This has got very... I'm glad you liked it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. There's a lot of cocktails and I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. Who would you recommend it, this movie to? This movie is good for someone who isn't sure how they feel maybe about this issue, who maybe is pregnant, doesn't want to be. Um, any female I think this is great for. This is good for men who need to learn how to fucking be a supportive partner. <laughs> um, parents not sure how to deal with uh, hearing if their child's pregnant. This is a great example of how to deal with that. Mm. I don't know. Anybody. Anybody. All people. Good answer. Mm. Uh, What mood should you be in to watch it? Drunk one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This feels like... If I was going to watch this for the first time without this podcast being a thing... I think that I would like to have watched this, my mind is thinking, late afternoon on like a Friday or Saturday. It's probably rainy and cloudy out, and I'm definitely laying down on the couch. I'm <laughs> lying on the couch, not per- like perked up. I am lying down on the couch with blankets. Unshowered. Yes. Day off, unshowered. Covered in crumbs. I've been watching shit all day, and I want one more thing. And then I'll maybe we'll make think about making dinner. Um, yeah, but day off, rainy, horizontal on the couch. You're ridiculous. I love it. Yeah, I am. You're right. What I'm would you correct. rate this movie? I would rate this um, one strong, badass woman against a hundred shitty middle-aged white men thinking they know anything about anything. We got a girl. Mm. That's pretty. Mm. Yep. Done. <laughs> That's what Teal has to say today. <laughs> I would rate it uh, 10 gold Kias out of 10 Muppet making fathers. In the heat, because the Muppets like heat. The Muppets <laughs> like heat. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so I much like for it. watching this with me. And that's me. it. Ending on a weird note. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we always? I feel like you had to know going into this that this was going to be a controversial episode. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have said it at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Uh, here, we'll cut out here right now. Joel, if you could just put the spoiler in uh, at the beginning. No. Spoiler. You know what? Uh, no. Cut. Yeah. Who Here's mine. shit? Fuck you guys. Fuck you. Welcome to we the world we of want. the internet. It was our choice to not put a spoiler that's in the beginning. Right. We put a spoiler Fuck at the you. end. Also, welcome to the internet, where sometimes you get shit you don't want to know about. Our that's podcast, our happens. choice. Yeah, just like our uterus, our choice. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> and if you're going to, please use protection, or at least know what you're going to. Well, if you're do. fucking yourself, just uh, oh, yeah. have a good time. Uh, so just basically, like, yeah. go into your liquor cabinet and put everything you have in a cup and drink it. It's delicious. Yeah.